gives me great pleasure to say that I'm joined by Ian and Luke from Clear Patrick. How are you both doing? Doing well. Thanks for having us. Great. Thank you so much for coming on. So I thought what we could do today is go track by track through the new EP. That sounds good with you. Yeah, that'd be great. Cool. So we start off with Zuck. Now this is like such a powerhouse to start the EP off on. And I think that just the EP in general, it contains like some of my favourite lyrics that I've, I've heard like in any album project, whatever. And this one in particular, Zuck, I really love. Um, so yeah, just tell me a bit more about that one. How did it come about? Yeah, I feel like I remember maybe sending you that riff oh. and you sent me drums and yes. we had like a weird like digital demo for a while yeah yeah um yeah and then i think it kind of just grew as 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 we started to be able to get together again to play i think we got to like put work in on it and it was always like i feel like we didn't take it very seriously for a while it was just kind of like a song that we we were messing around with um it found its home on this ep yeah, I guess this was a, a true COVID baby. This was like one of the first times we had like had to do something like that and like sending parts back and forth. And that first demo is absolutely insane sounding. I remember <laughs> thinking those drums sounded so sick, but <laughs> absolutely not. And they have kind of that theme of like the internet, social media, like in that song. Would you say that sort of runs through the EP in a way? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think that, um, like, part of the the idea to even, like, make the EP was just that there was these songs coming out that had this similar thread through them, and it was inspiring to us. Like, we kind of just followed the songs on this one, and it ended up being, like, it's not a concept EP, but I guess, well, actually, maybe it is shit. I don't know. It's pretty <laughs> close. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so from Zuck we go straight into OK, so this is the first one that was released as a single. So having had it out for a little while, had the fans like, you know, get their reaction to it and play it live. What is it? What has the reaction been like to that song? It's been cool. We That song's existed for like a really long time now. It was actually truthfully almost a, a bummer track mm. and uh, through whatever, however, whatever circumstances it just didn't end up feeling right at the time and uh, as these other songs came together for this project it kind of resurfaced and kind of felt uh, fell nicely within these tracks too and uh, I think uh, it was one of those ones that really helped um, glue things together but uh, yeah we, we've been playing it live for forever and uh it was cool but I, I don't know if uh people fully got it until we actually put it out and then once we put it out and and there's been different you know the, the song has grown too since we've started playing it um so it's been cool seeing like the difference between uh, the initial reactions which were exciting and people were excited that we were playing a new song to uh now when we play it live, like the most recent times, it's been like, feels like a new thing, It's which has been exciting. Yeah, from seeing like your live sets as well, like in the Bummer documentary and like your festival sets and stuff, the way that you two can like command a stage with just like a drum set and a guitar and singing and getting all those people like so like roused up and stuff with the music, I think is really incredible when it's like, such a, a big sound and a big audience is there like a song in particular that you look forward to playing the most live well it's, it's funny you say that because we get that a lot mm -hmm. and i think that the exact thing that we're able to do is like fueled by the opposite end like the crowd and like yeah. people who are just there to have a good time and and it, it's we're we we definitely give it our all every single time but it, there's different levels that are achieved depending on you know how the crowd is feeling and it it's very much a mutual thing in that regard and then as as far as a track i think we'd probably both agree on good grief at least being one of those tracks that 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 was one especially in the uk and, and in europe we 
we play that and, and people are singing the opening riff and, and just the balance, the overall balance that's been like, that was sort of a, a vision. I remember Luke coming up with the initial idea for that song and that the, the vision from the jump, which was just being this like sort of bouncy, vibey, sing along kind of moment. Um, it really, it's really come to life in the, in our most recent touring. Uh, experiences so that I, I'd say that's probably one of the favorites it's just it's electric it's it's amazing yeah. I think hearing the songs um, like hearing them recorded and then hearing them in the live setting they just translate so well like I remember I think I saw you it was on the Frank Carter tour and I'd never seen like a crowd getting like mosh pits and stuff but like the first support act of a band it just kind of set the level so high that I feel like everyone that came on after that was like, wow, we've got to follow this now. Sure, sure. Oh, that's <laughs> cool. Thank you. Thanks for saying that. And then, so after those two, we go, you kind of switch it up completely, go right into scaring me, sort of a more like toned down, sort of acoustic, but still with the influences from like the other tracks in there. Can you tell me more about how you wrote that one? Yeah, that one was like... Uh... I don't know, it came It came from like uh, kind of just practicing mm. recording sort of, like wasn't really trying to write a song, just more like messing with stuff on the laptop and it took a lot of, well, it took a lot of work and also not a lot of work, like it's been a very, um, it's been, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know, it, it came together easily and like feels really good to us now, it's natural, maybe that's the word I'm looking for. But at the same time, it's like you said, it's a little different. It's a little subdued, and um, maybe for a moment, that was a little scary to us, ironically. Um, but as as we worked on it, once we got the recording, we got that first mix back. We were like uh, very excited. It's just the song that I think is it's a very exciting step for our band sonically and production wise and just something we're really excited to share with people. Do you have favorites off of the EP? Yeah, I think uh, probably Scaring was probably my favorite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would I would have to agree with that. And even the process of learning to uh, play it, like we playing it live is 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 kind of a, a bit of a step up for us too. It's it's been really exciting for us to kind of uh, push the boundaries of what just the two of us can do. And, and we kind of have, um, expectations and not expect well just like places we don't necessarily want to go with with you know the sonics it's easy to you know rely on specific tools and and whatnot but we as far as the performance where this feels like a, a very big step uh, step up in regards of what we're capable of doing still the two of us and it's uh it's super exciting and also just like sonically and, and songwriting wise it's just like it feels like it's different but it's like it's very much us which i yeah i i love that song and then from that we go into doom another sort of like more acoustic number and um, title track as well how come you chose that one to be the title i don't remember what the like final verdict was i think we just decided that calling an ep doom was was dope it's like it's pretty i think it's uh it wraps up like the the overall sentiment of the EP well, just doom. Um, but yeah, that song's been around for a little while too. Um, and uh, we're, we're happy it, it's found its home and it's, it's a claim to the title on this EP. It feels, feels nice that the EP kind of just like crumbles at the end. Mm. And I like how you have that and then it goes into servers speak. So you've got like the sort of ambient instrumental like off of the back of like you start off with like such high energy with like Zuck and OK and then you sort of go on a journey throughout the EP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the subject matter, it felt like there's no place for a crescendo there. Like that, that would just be uh, almost hypocritical. Like, it, it just had to be, uh, it couldn't be triumph in the end. And uh, apart from the EP release, and have you got anything else planned for the rest of the year? Just vibing. We're just going to vibe. <laughs> um, 
we, we spent a lot of time touring this last year and I think we're excited to keep exploring uh, musician things from a less mobile standpoint and uh, hopefully work on some new music and just, uh, yeah, just vibe. We're just, we're just vibing. Anything to add to that, Luke? I... No, that really sums it up. Hmm. So, so keep your eyes peeled for some vibing. Please. Yeah, we're, just gonna, we're gonna just do diff, we're gonna do weird stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your preferred method of vibing? You ever see? You ever watch SpongeBob? Is SpongeBob like a? Yeah, like, yeah. You know that the the lost ep is it the lost episode where SpongeBob oh, yeah. is just what is the entire episode? He's just like vibing. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. That's kind of my interpretation of vibing. Um, I'll allow you, Luke, to. Uh, add to that if you have any but that's yeah that's I'm, at least I'm, me. I'm there too maybe with like uh like demos playing over it instead of that song they have in the episode. yeah, yeah. You know, just like random demos like pieces of songs we're working on I mean, that that sounds like a brilliant way to to vibe <laughs> it does doesn't it <laughs> yeah um i like to end with a bit of quick fire round as well let's do it what is your favorite song of the year so far uh um like one that came out this year? Yeah. Okay. Um, I must. I must say. Uh, oh shit! Did that even come out this year? Sorry, just a second. <laughs> yeah, give me. Yes. This is the point where everyone panics and goes to their spot. Oh, I know what I'll say. Um, <laughs> Roman Holiday by by Fontaine's DC. Great tune. Great tune. Um. Uh, I'm looking through my Spotify right now. Uh, Arctic Monkeys. There better be a mirror ball. That's that's. I'm obsessed with that song still. What has been your most embarrassing moment of my life? Say as part of the band, or if you've if you've got a standout one from life, then sure. Uh, as the band, we've definitely been embarrassed before. I don't know. From my personal life, one thing that comes to mind is the. One time I was going for a job interview for like my first job, I was so nervous and <laughs> I was trying my whole time, <laughs> I was trying the whole time to like kill it and get this position as a stock boy in a grocery store. And at the end of the interview, I met like the stock manager and he shook my hand and he said like, I forget his name. Um, let's say his name is Jamie. He shook my hand and he was like, hey Luke, nice to meet you, I'm Jamie. And then as I was shaking his hand, I was like trying to look him in the eyes and be super professional. And I, I looked him directly in his eyes and I said, hey, my name's Jamie. And I just took the man's name from him and he was like really confused. And I, my whole face went red because he knows my name is Luke because it says it on my resume. But I just said Jamie. And then we just, uh, he just showed me around the store and I got the job and never talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I have, I can't think, I'm having a hard time thinking. One time I slipped on a banana peel. Like for real, I, I slipped on something when I was walking to work from 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 our old high school, and I slipped on something. I went, "What the hell?" And I looked behind me, and it was actually a banana peel. <laughs> it was, uh, but it, there was no one around, so it wasn't that embarrassing. But that's just that's what comes to mind. So I don't know. It would have been really embarrassing. If someone said, "Yeah, that. oh my God, Ian slipped on a banana peel." <laughs> <laughs> and you fall down, then there's like birds flying around your head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What are your karaoke tunes? Um, maybe I'd maybe I'd want to sing like uh, I'd want to sing like Roy Orbison. I'd want to sing "Crying" by Roy Orbison. It'd be a total cornball, but maybe something by ABBA. I love ABBA. I secretly love ABBA. You can never go wrong with ABBA. Have you got? A I just feel like I know, like I would just know it, and I would just like it'd be one of those things, and I don't know. <laughs> Not to be like Dave Grohl. Dave Grohl always says that. He loves ABBA and it's like, oh my god, I'm not trying to be like Dave Grohl. Oh no. That's just me. That's my own opinion. What has been your best memory with a fan? Oh, uh, there's so many. On one of our first tours in the US, like our first big tours, we met uh, this dude in Las Vegas that we're still buddies with to this day. And he's just such an awesome person it was one of like the first times we really saw like like our music really meant something to this person and they like shared that with us and i don't know it was just a really special night it was like this lame show at this evil knievel themed pizza restaurant where no one came 
pretty much accepted this kid and then the it was 19 plus and, and he was like 18 or something so they were trying to, they were trying to kick him out and we had to like fight to have him stay for like the show so we could have one person there watching our set yeah luke, yeah luke vouched for him it was, it was, it was awesome yeah, i was like i swear to god this guy is not gonna drink a lick of alcohol he just wants this big kid like just let him stay um we got, that was a really beautiful moment we still keep in touch with that guy. He's a great guy. That's mine too. That has to be mine. And what are the best and worst parts about being musicians? I know the worst part is like when I when I hear music I love now, mm. I like I can I really enjoy it and it's super exciting, but often compare myself to it and then feel like, oh my god, I'll never make something that good. Like or or I hear something I love and I'm like, we have to change the whole band. <laughs> 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 and then never act on that because that would be silly and, and then that's how you like make a bunch of mistakes make bad music but but it's just kind of weird it kind of like maybe at times subtracts a little bit from the the common music listening experience for sure best part about being a musician ripping music <laughs> true <Jerome's. laughs> yeah i don't know it's 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 a it's a beautiful it's like kind of just the opposite of like like it kind of to add to what Luke's saying is like it's one of the best jobs that I've had at least that I've experienced you know maybe skydiving instructor would be better or something but um it's like at the same token it's like there's some there's you find yourself in moments where it's like you kind of approach things a little differently like as if like it is your job rather than uh just fully for the fun of it and I, I would say like 90% of the time it just gets to be for the fun of it but there is like a an odd responsibility with it sometimes that can sort of warp the original uh, you know dream of it but uh, for the most part it, it's an amazing thing and uh, getting to just make your own rules and make your own sounds it's a it's a it's a very liberating thing when when you allow it to be and uh, so, as you guys have been in the UK a lot, are you familiar with Greg's? Yeah. <laughs> well, I ask everybody sure. this question. So, what do you order from Greg's? You know what? It was all about the sausage rolls for a while, but our uh, tour manager slash best buddy, Jake, Shorty Bads, Shorten, uh, opened my eyes to the, um, the chicken bakes. I almost forgot what they were called. Yeah. And those... Only if they're hot, because sometimes they're not hot and it's like not good at all. But a fresh chicken bake, I love that. That's my that's my thing. I can't remember the last time I actually got food there. I usually go in, and then like, I I look around and I feel like I really don't want to eat any of it. <laughs> um, but I know that they have some like juices in that fridge, like a couple different juice options that are available everywhere else too. But it's just kind of a good spot to get them because maybe your boys are like getting some sausage rolls or chicken bakes and then like you just grab a juice. Hey, could you give me a juice? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I think I might, I might say that my favorite thing to get at Greg's is um, a juice. <laughs> 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 That's good. And finally, would you like to request a song for me to play on the show? Yes. Should it be a joint one be between Ian and I? Um, you can have either one each, or if you can decide on one. Any particular vibe you're looking for? You've got completely free reign. Okay, I think I have one. I'm going to say uh, Satisfaction by Sick Joy. Could you play a song called Canna, C-A-N-A exclamation point, by an artist called Sky Kid? Definitely. I'll get both of those off for you. Nice. Sweet, thanks. Hey, thank you so much for chatting. It's been great. Yeah, thanks for having us. This was nice. Thank you.